All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so this man weighs uh, 150 pounds, jumps onto the boat B, which was originally at rest. If he has a horizontal component of velocity of three feet per second just before he enters the boat, um, determine the weight of the boat if they both are moving now at two feet per second once he enters it. So I would do conservation of momentum. MV of the man plus MV of the boat. Uh, I'll put FT right here and then I'll think about, okay, is there really an FT? Is there really an impulse? There's no impulse between the two, but if I'm doing the mass and velocities of both of them, then it might be internal. Okay. These, the boat and the man are moving together. So this velocity and that velocity afterwards are both the same. They're both two. For problems like this, I would do the mass of the man, mass of the boat, and just multiply it times one velocity, right? Two things that stick together. And in, in, in physics, you might talk about like elastic and inelastic collisions and some you know, sometimes you actually can, energy is conserved, sometimes it's not. Um, I'm not gonna get far into that. We're just gonna say for collisions, we're using momentum instead of energy. Uh, but anyway, things that stick together, just on the right-hand side of your equation, just put those masses together and they're moving with one velocity. Direction matters, direction matters. Let's only consider the X direction. All right, is there any impulse, any outside impulse on this? Don't worry about the impulse of the man on the boat or the boat on the man, it's equal and opposite. But there might be an impulse of the water on our objects, and that would be outside. But don't you think that the impulse of the water would be straight up? This water, I don't think, is really restricting it from going left and right. Um, but if you bounce down, the, the water would push you back up. So there would be an impulse of the water in the y direction, but not an impulse of the water in the x direction. So for my x equation right here, uh, I'd say there's no impulse. No impulse. Okay, so let's do this right here. The mass of the man, 150 at... You know, th this equation asks for mass, so I'm about to divide by 32.2. Um, we'll, we'll see how that works out. It goes, uh, it has a velocity of three. Uh, it start, the boat started from rest, so that's all the momentum we have. There's no external impulse. And then now we would have 150 over 32.2 plus the mass of the boat. Wait, 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 Look, plus the weight of the boat. I'm, there's a number of ways we could do this. The weight of the boat over 32.2. And they're, both, they're all moving together at two. And so this X equation, I, I can solve for the weight of the boat. I could have gotten away with not dividing by 32.2, but only because every single term has the 32.2. Uh, so sometimes, you know, if every term has the same thing, you can divide both sides um, out of here. Then we can get the weight. The weight of the boat, 75 pounds. Weight of the boat, 75 pounds. I don't know if that looked like a collision to you. I think it, maybe it did. Uh, but here's a problem uh that i think you'll see in like a homework problem and it's kind of an interesting and fun type of problem but let, let's say you are in a boat to begin with stationary not going anywhere you're in a boat to begin with and let's say you throw out of the boat maybe maybe a really large object what would happen if you throw the object out of the boat to the right, 
the, you and the boat would go backwards to the left. I don't know if that's a, if that seems like a collision type of a problem, but th that we can do conservation of energy for those types of problems. You know, if you're standing on a roller, roller skates, you know, or skateboard or something, and you throw somebody or push somebody, if we had two people with their chairs and they push each other away from each other, we could do conservation of momentum for, for those problems. It might look something like this, MV plus MV equals MV plus MV. You know, let's, let's only think about it in the X direction. Uh, and so if they were both from rest, it starts with zero. And it's okay if my left-hand side of my equation is completely zero, because what's gonna happen, maybe this is me and the boat go, you know, negative, uh, but the block goes positive or something like that. And so then it, it, it could add up to zero. But anyway, those types of problems are actually moment, impulse momentum problems. But in all of these equations, these need to be our real velocities. These need to be our real velocities, not the perceived velocities, right? You might think that you threw the block five meters per second, but what might have actually happened is the three and the negative two, right? You might think you threw it five. It, it might feel like you threw it five. Your muscles thought you threw it five, but it might have only been going two and you go back, I'm sorry, it, it might be going three and you're going backwards two. And that's why it seems like five. So in your equations, don't use relative velocities in, in this momentum equation. We have to use real velocities. And so what's, what's, what's hard is if I said, hey, I threw it relative to me at five. So, and we're, we'll do a problem. I'm gonna add in a problem uh, to our notes next class um, about this. I might, and I don't know if it'll be a glass floor problem, but uh, we'll talk about that. We, we're, we're gonna have to kind of go back and revisit relative velocity to make sure we're not plugging in, you know, we're not plugging in A slash B here, right? We're plugging in A, we're plugging in B, and if the problem gave us A slash B, we, we got to figure out, I can't plug in A slash B right here. I got to plug in either A or B. Got to plug in my real velocities right here. All right. Think about that. All right. Next.